So what can we do to help? Um, you know, one of my things uh, that I like to push is to plant things that bees go to. And um, we, if we're giving up our fields and our large tracts of farming land, um, a tree can, can make up for a lot of that. And we have a lot of flowering trees that flower at different times of the year. And planting a, a tree that a bee might go to um, is probably one of the best things that we can do. But uh, bees like herbs, uh, they, they like clover, they like, it, we can always uh, use the internet and Google things that honeybees work and, and we can produce a long list of trees and plants that the bees like to work and, and that, that will help a lot. Um, I've always noticed when I do my hive inspections that the part of the season when we have a lot flowering, the bees uh, are bringing a lot of honey and pollen in, they're always at their healthiest. The, the colony looks strong, the brood pattern looks good, and then as the season dwindles and there's not as much food available to them, that's when you start to see a, a, a decline in their health. So if everybody just bought one flowering shrub or tree, how much of a difference well, would it make? Well, probably more, more than one, I would have mm -hmm. to say, but um, I think it would make a big difference. I think it, when we have, uh, subdevelopments and either commercial or residential and and if we plant a diversity uh, in our trees things again that flower um, I think that that will go a long way and then if individually as homeowners if we do the same thing uh, yeah I think it will go a long way you see a lot of success in city beekeeping because there are a lot of flowering trees that were planted years ago and I think we got away from that or they've been cut down and, and replaced with, with trees that aren't flowering because they got too big. But if you look at old town centers, uh, a linden tree, for example, is a good uh, example. There used to be a lot of linden trees and those would bloom in July, which was a good time for um, uh, things to bloom uh, in the beekeeping uh, world. And, and now we see less and less of that. Um, we see wetlands uh, that we're losing. Sometimes there's a conflict between uh, beekeepers and say people that don't like um, invasive plants. Purple loosestrife is a good example. Um, there's been um, a large movement to eradicate or, or strongly diminish the amount of purple loosestrife that grew in our wetlands. So, there was a movement to breed beetles that would eat that purple loosestrife. Well, that's really knocked down. Purple loosestrife is something that blooms in July and August. So that plant has been almost eliminated in, in certain areas. And so now we see at that time, the bees don't have much to work and it really takes down the health of our colony. So there has to be a concerted effort if we decide to you know, take out a, a major honey plant to make sure that we replant with uh, things that will flower and that'll be good for the honeybees. Without the honeybees, we don't get that pollination for our own food. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.